millions of you right there. So anyway, welcome to the closing showcase of the hackathon of 2024 in Katowice, Poland. And thank you for clapping because I want you to all give yourselves a really big hand here. Um, you've all been working hard, uh, going to sessions, going to do your projects in the hackathon room or wherever you might be, um, but you've all made connections, right? Every single one of you talked to at least one person here. Um, and you've met new people. You've met people that you haven't seen in five plus years maybe um, if you didn't go to the Singapore Wikimania. Um, but it's great to see you all here. So um, just real quick, if there's any late additions I've got on the screen here on most of the slides, the Etherpad. Um, the last time I looked, we only had 20 submissions. I know there's more of you here. We had well over 200 people that signed up for the hackathon. So I know you guys are working on stuff. So even if you don't have slides to show, you can still fill it out. Um, come up here and just talk about your thing. Y'all have two minutes. So um, also want to show that there's um, the session is being recorded. It's being live streamed right now. Hello, everyone. Um, and so just let you know that you will be on camera. So um, maximum of two minutes. Uh, we've got a cute little horn. I don't think Danny's back yet, but um, it'll be a surprise for you how loud it is. So, but anyway, you have two minutes. We'll also have a timer on the screen over here um, on the stage. So you can also look at that to see how much time you actually have. Um, again, one computer here. So all your stuff needs to be in that etherpad and all your links need to be actually open so that I can actually, so that this computer can open it. All right, now is your time. Start queuing up. The idea here is to line up on this side. Then you're gonna come up onto the stairs over here, talk here, um, and as soon as I'm done here, I'll switch over to the etherpad. Um, come up here one at a time, do your pitch, talk about your project, that type of thing. Um, go into a little bit of detail, right? But also know that some of the folks here in the audience are not super technical, they may be newbies. And they're just like, I don't know what you were talking about. So give enough information that people can understand what you're trying to say. And then when you're done, after the horn goes through, you're gonna go off on the right hand side here and then go down the stairs and then go back to your seat. Any questions? Cool, let's get started. Thank you so much. So um, your time starts now. Uh, I uh, started working on this before the hackathon, and the idea was to create um, better, more visual interfaces for reconciliation, actually recon reconciling uh, items, text to Wikidata items manually to create uh, more visual uh, interfaces so that you can make judgments whether the thing you are reconciling is really the thing that you find on Wikidata. So I can just briefly show what I find for Katowice. This is, is not supposed to be the way that you use this. You don't type in things. You sit this on top of some some other tool, for example, Google Sheets or OpenRefine, and then you would get this a candidate list on the left, and you could go through the different options, and it would show the data for that specific option, and you would have the match button here in the list, as well as on those items on the right in the map. You have different options. Oh, well, these don't work. These two work, these that I show. But uh, the idea is that you would go, you would, you could, for example, compare web pages of the data set, or the based on the property on Wikidata. So all kinds of different ways, put side by side, even change the uh, reconciliation settings or services that you base the search on on the fly while you do it. And then, well, not everything has been done about this, but these two work. So. This here on the left is our uh, wiki documentaries project, which shows uh, all kinds of information about that. And the one on the right is just a map, map di display with a picture and the QID and the, yeah, the title and the description. I mean, do we have, I mean, is it already finished? No? <laughs> 
Oh, it's zero, sorry. <laughs> Okay, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sam. I am actually presenting on behalf of Diego de la Hera, who is not here in Poland with us, um, but this week he worked on something that I think is super cool. Um, so the Wikipedia Library, I'll talk about this in a second. The Wikipedia Library is a cool program that you can use to get access to pay all the research, uh, reliable sources. It's hosted out on cloud services, um, so there's no obvious link to it from Wikipedia when you're doing editing, when you're researching a topic. Um, and so we thought it would be nice if it was much easier to get from Wikipedia to the library. And so I have a little screen recording of the user script that Diego made, so that I don't have to install it on stage. Da, 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 da. So the idea is, uh, let me improve the quality if I can. There we go. So the idea is that you get a new button up in the top there by search, and you put your search term into the normal Wikipedia search bar, but instead of hitting the search button, you click the little Wikipedia library owl, and it routes you through the Wikipedia library and takes you straight to the search results for that term. So rather than needing to remember that the library exists and like navigate to it separately from, from Wikipedia, you can just start searching, click a button, and you'll be in the library, which hopefully uh, makes things a lot easier. And so if you want to install it, it's in the etherpad, the link here. You just need to import that into your common GS. That's it. Thanks. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Claude Alejandro. I am a contributor from the Philippines. And while I was walking to Wikimania with a Malaysian contributor, he told me about the situation that they had at the Katasandusun Wikipedia, which was that for some reason, the wiki was created like a few, uh, like a month back, but it did not have the localized versions of the um, of the, wi the the wiki logos. So the basically what I did here this is this hackathon. This is my first time contributing to the part of uh, the uh, web the website which deals with the uh, configuration. So basically, everything that, that the only thing that was done here is that um, we added the logos in. So now, uh, when you open the Katasandosun Wikipedia, the localized version, which has the proper um, the the tagline of Wikipedia and Katasandosun, is now showing at the bottom of the logo here at the top left. And then, since there were a few other wikis that were created that were also uh, from Malaysian languages, we decided, hey, why not let's just do all of it at the same time. So like, um, we also did the same for the uh, Bajau language and for the Malaysian wiki source, which was actually only created uh, just this past week. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Hi there, I'm William, um, engineer on the Trust and Safety product team, but um, I decided I didn't want to do any work at the hackathon, I wanted to do something completely different to my work, which was improving maintenance script coverage in MediaWiki Core. So I have some slides here, just to make it a bit easier to see. So you can see here, I showed, essentially, I took this screenshot uh, when I was at home, and I started doing this, uh, a 5.8% test coverage. I'm now up to 10.81, probably a bit more now because I think some more patches have merged. But the entire idea is that maintenance scripts in core are important. If they break because they're infrequently run, you may find a third party wiki tries to run it, breaks their wiki, things go wrong. So you can see here, these are all the new files that were created just to improve the test coverage by 5%. So if you want to improve test coverage, feel free to add me as a reviewer on the patch. I will review your patch. Very happy to do that. So. That's all I've got to say, so thank you very much. Hi. Um, so what I did this hackathon was to work on the documentation of a library I've been working on, which is called Toolforge I18N, and it makes uh, Toolforge tools translatable if they're written in Flask. Uh, and so now there is some documentation here uh, published on how do you zoom in on a Mac? I don't know. 
uh, on Read the Docs, like, okay, I can't make it work. Just look at the video or look at the link yourself. Um, it's published on Read the Docs. It's uh, nicely formatted. It describes what the features are of the library, such as supporting the gender magic word and the plural magic word. I can't even press escape. Um, and then there's some more documentation. Like I don't actually want people to uh, use this just yet, but there's now some documentation describing how you would, in theory, set up and then start uh, developing your tool, what the message syntax is, and so on. Um, yeah, I think I'll stop torturing this poor Mac and I'll just be done. Thanks. Better? Yes. Hello, my name is Simon. I was exploring a codex uh, front end uh, designed by Wikimedia Foundation as the new uh, style for um, uh, extensions, for gadgets, for uh, uh, tools. And uh, in order to like grasp whether it's feasible to like write a tool using this new design technology, I um, developed a new front end for PetScan that has the same complex amount of fields as uh, PetScan itself. And you can like query certain categories, get a table, have the sortability of the table. You can also um, configure additional output uh, columns in order to not only get uh, like the titles but also some pictures to to the um, uh, row, rows in the result table. You of course can also switch to commons in order to uh, query data from commons. You can use shortcuts to trigger the the search. And uh, when you dislike the output within uh, this tool, you can also like switch to HTML format when it then opens like the original PetScan front end. The tool is called DinoScan, and here's also the reference to this hackathon and the nice uh, dinosaurs. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Vincent, I come from France and today I will briefly show you uh, this project. Uh, I have a project called Space Media which is a bot that runs on Toolforge and Cloud VPS that uploads already pictures from various space agencies and astronomers and so on. And recently I received a request from uh, other users to import new pictures that are not related to space. And during the hackathon, I added a new sources from the US government pictures uh, published on Flickr in public domain. Uh, I started by the White House. Uh, there are se three uh, repositories on Flickr from the White House uh, for the three last US president. Um, and so the, sorry. And so you can see on this front end, the list of pictures that have already been uploaded. Many pictures were already uploaded by other users. So the tool allows to find what is missing and import what the pictures that are missing. And uh, what is done is that uh, once the pictures are uploaded to comments, they appear in a dedicated category and I see uh, that it's for, com oh no, it's just is missing a parenthesis, sorry. It's for community review. And so everyone can review the picture, improve the metadata or the title if needed. And just the thing is that the tool also adds uh, structure data with the comments SDC. And that's all for me, thank you. Hello everyone, I'm user Danisan1 and uh, I will present the work that we made on uh, uh, the template uh, image map which uh, 
allows uh, to in, include in a page a map and uh, specify uh, one or more part uh, which op upon click take to some wiki link. What we wanted to do is uh, to allow the user to uh, use an SVG file and uh, don't require him to create the whole polygon of uh, a certain part of the image, for example, a uh, country on the map, and uh, instead allow him to specify an ID of a path on, uh, inside the SVG and uh, automatically use its polygon. So that uh, required uh, to understand how to transform the content of the SVG path into the input of the image map. And uh, in particular, uh, we had uh, to work a lot on uh, the transform directives uh, in SVG, which contain uh, stuff like transformation matrices that need to be applied to the coordinates. And uh, we, in the end, uh, we managed to uh, obtain this uh, path. We need to, uh, we still need to encode it into an, an extension uh, uh, to propose an improvement to the existing extension or create an extension that wraps the existing one. Thank you. Hi, I'm Peter Coombe. I'm also known as User the Web, uh, and I've been working on this project to do a new template for community central notice banners. So I normally work for the foundation fundraising department, uh, making banners for that. I wanted to make some banners that might be a bit more popular uh, and help out the um, central notice admins who get a lot of requests and spend a lot of time customizing banners. So this is the current code for a standardish central notice banner. Uh, I think this design was come up with by Joseph Seddon a while ago and uh, is a great design, but it could use a bit of modernization, a bit of cleanup of the code. Um, so taking this design, I then went through and oops, made, basically started from scratch uh, and reproduced the design. Um, so this is now a lot simpler. It doesn't have exactly all the features yet, um, but it's mostly there. Um, and an advantage is this now supports dark mode as well, um, since that wasn't a feature before. Uh, and it's more flexible. It's much easier because it's using CSS variables, so admins will be able to just customize their content up here uh, just by editing the top rather than having to go through all the code. And here is a preview of what it looks like on the site. Um, and yeah, uh, so it works in dark mode. And I made a couple of variants. So you can just swap out this image with something different if you like. Uh, previously, you'd have to mess around with all the CSS for that. Now you just change the image and it should work most of the time. Uh, and you can change the colors to whatever you like. Um, yeah, that's it. Oh, and uh, shout out to Ray, who also uh, encouraged me to come and present this because it wasn't originally a hackathon project. Well, it was originally a hackathon project two years ago, and I didn't finish it, so I finished it this time. Um, Ray also made a, a cool version of this as well with the nice rounded corners. So yeah, thanks. Hello, my name is Ranjit Suji. I'm from India. I'm an admin in Malayalam Wikipedia. Uh, yeah, my tool is a small tool lives in the terminal. Uh, it's called Wicut CLI. Uh, at 
uh, it basically uh, it is a tool to cut uh, small videos from a large video using a command line. Uh, this tool is created to cut videos of individual sessions in Wikimania 2024 from a long full day lasting video, uh, which uh, uh, the task was assigned to me uh, from Emerald Roos and uh, all the volunteers are signing up for uh, timestamping task. Nobody wants to cut these videos, and Emerald is doing this thing by her own. So we created a script uh, that uh, read these timestamps from a CSV file, and it cut all the video, and it will make shorter videos in a subfolder there. Uh, yeah, that saved a whole lot of time. Uh, and a whole lot of hectic work to uh, uh, check whether the cuts are correct or not, all the stuff. We used FFmpeg and uh, yeah, Python to do the stuff. Um, the uh, thesis, username thesis, I don't know how to pronounce his name. He added, uh, uh, he tweaked this tool and added uh, some other lines of code to work the code uh, inside a Google Collab so that uh, Emerald can access all the video from uh, her Google Drive and produce those videos into directly into the Google uh, Drive. Yeah, Mujib Rahman is the uh, primary programmer who does this thing uh, and I am assisting him uh, with the directions and all the stuff. I done uh, the documentation and the uh, logo and all the stuff and some code changes. So you can get this uh, thing from GitLab. Escape. Can I push? Go back. Can I go back? Escape mode. Go to the thing. Yeah. So I worked on support. F f I tried to pass the wiki functions dump. Yeah. So I. Try to write a path for the wiki functions dump to extract out of the wiki functions dump the code implementations in JavaScript and Python. It's not ready so far, but at least it. I was so far successful that I was able to create an, a small text file as an output. Automatically, that channel extracted one code function, so not so much, but I have achieved so far, but at least that it worked. Then I used a special programming language which is not used so much on today. It's COBOL, an old English, old programming language based on English syntax. Yes, so it's um, similar to, I would say quite similar to English if you look at it. And so, yeah, if you are interested, in it, look, you can see a bit about it. So it's um, a small English sentences I need to look at I can scroll down here but now yeah, I don't know how I can scroll down here so I can't show the bottom of this file yeah but so it's kind of small English sentence so that's how Kova looks like and I like it and I think that's an example that there are many different programming languages many different approaches to get to and result and so I hope that also to such not so much used brooches are welcome and will be used by others. Yeah. Wow, these are bright. <laughs> Hi everyone, this, I'm Maximilian Dorr. Um, I go by Cyberpower 678 or the inter Internet Archive bot operator. This is Amir, my resident translation expert who's been helping me a lot lately, who has decided to help me, or actually just pretty much himself, uh, implement RTL support. So I'll give it to him. Yeah, uh, hi. So uh, his tool, um, which uh, fixes uh, how many? Two million links? Million? Ten, 10 million links? 
on average around two million a year. Yeah. So uh, yeah, he had a presentation. So he had a presentation about that tool. Now that tool is generally awesome, uh, and it has a web uh, interface for like for, like a console for administrators. Uh, what is great about that web interface is that it can be translated to a lot of uh, languages. I completely translated it to Hebrew, and somebody else completely translated it to Arabic. But um, it didn't have any support for right to left languages. So the translation was shown all jumbled. So yeah, here you can see the screenshots of how it used to look like. You don't have to know Hebrew to see that it's aligned to the wrong side. It aligned to the English side. And this is the same in Arabic. And uh, yeah, and let's scroll a little bit further down. This is Persian. Uh, so like right to left languages were all broken. So we fixed them. And uh, now they are not broken. So we fixed them. And uh, it's already in production. So now the, these good translations can actually be used. And that's about it. And we have uh, a few more like little uh, right to left bugs to fix there. And we're probably going to fix them. But uh, this is the like 80% of the main uh, thing. And this is already in production. So um, that's it. Anything to add? Nope, not really. You just summed it up. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Um. Where is the? Uh, uh, you you moved it? Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, hello everyone. So I work on Lingua Libre. Lingua Libre is a service to record word for Wikitionaries. We have one million three hundred thousand audio right now on Lingua Libre. Um, hosted on commons, and um, I want to, to report an experience. I once worked with a small trip from a Amazonia with 2,000 speakers, and what they asked me is they, they, they were happy to contribute to, uh, to, the, to audio to commons and wikitionary, but actually they wanted a dictionary for their community, and we were not provi providing this. So now we are moving in this direction. <coughs> uh, pa -pa -pa -pa. Excuse me. Mm. Yeah, that goes faster. So um, we, they wanted some dictionary, very basic dictionary, like something I already made for Chinese French or for Chinese English. And oops, yeah, something like that. You see the, the word in their language and translation or something like that. And uh, you can play with the, with the audio. <laughs> I'm not used to Apple. Um, so uh, they wanted something like that. Uh, on Lingua Libre, we have list, and we wanted to have rich list. That means um, you have the L1 uh, words, and in then you have the translation, the metadata, and so, so on. So we added this feature. So now the, our list on Lingua Libre have uh, the word to record and the translation. So this allows us to both work on Lingua Libre peacefully and work on the list like a minimal uh, dictionary. And the aim um, is to provide an API which can provide uh, the minimal dictionary data and to then have something which is back, which we don't have yet. But for now, we just added the, the filter. But our aim is to provide some dictionary like this for, for the community who come to us and uh, which is we will be doable in something like a few days for a community of um, a few days, a few hours for a community of five contributors. Thank you. Yeah, um, hello, uh, my name is Munir, uh, username uh, Marusian or Adiofagus. And, and, uh, uh, and my name is Hussein, I'm from Morocco. Yeah, so uh, what we did is uh, uh, we collaborated to uh, finish some tasks for the Moroccan standard Temazir, uh, uh, um, like uh, um, Wikimedia uh, uh, projects. Um, and so we chose two, two quick uh, tasks that uh, we could do like within the, uh, like a, a few hours at most. 
and one of them was to uh, develop a, a, a welcome script. So the, the script would uh, run uh, with a bot and uh, distribute like a welcome message uh, to uh, new users. And uh, the other one was to debug a f wiki function, which I worked on, um, uh, I think, a few months ago. Uh, but since I'm not an expert on this language, I had to use the expertise of uh, Hussein, who's a native speaker. Um, right. Uh, so this, whoa. Uh, yeah, this is an example of the uh, message that was distributed by, by this bot, Amazir bot, on the. Um, on the, the um, Moroccan standard Temazir to Wikipedia. And this Wikipedia, by the way, is a, is a pre pretty new one. It uh, launched on November 2023. Um, right, and the second thing was, um, yeah, so the, the wiki function. Uh, so the, the function didn't work uh, uh, very well. And uh, uh, so with, with Hussein's help, uh, uh, we were able to, to correct uh, uh, the, the implementation in Python. And we also added a, a few tests. So that's it. Thank you. Let's see. OK. God, I hate Mac. Um, OK, let's see. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, hello. My name is Amir, uh, usually not in this conference. Uh, but uh, I've been a staff database architect at the Wikimedia Foundation, but in this conference, I, I was mostly busy visiting and talking and catching up, so I didn't do much. So I decided instead of doing that, uh, I will shamelessly steal what others have done and uh, present them to you. I just reviewed them, something like that. The first one is, um, no, uh, yeah, uh, I, uh, anyway, so, uh, <laughs> anyway, what the... <laughs> So you have, you have, when you want to, you have a patrol right, and there's a new page or like new edit. Uh, when you want to patrol a new page, uh, there is at the bottom of the page, there's this wee, tiny thing that you can click to patrol that, edit, that page or edit. Uh, but now we did small change, and it was uh, mostly done by Ibrahim, my, my great friend. Um, I turned this to a really tiny button that uh, now I actually can see when you're reading the page and want to review it. It's already merged. It will go live next week. Um, the second thing that I've, uh, we've changed, it's mostly done by Gego, but again, I'm shame shamelessly presenting it, is something called uh, SBOMs or Software Bill of Material, which basically means uh, you are a, a list of ingredients in a, like a, a software, and then you put the dependencies that we have. It's a standardized, it's a, like a kind, kind of becoming the industry standard at this point, um, and this helps to actually so security scanners to actually look for our uh, dependencies and say, oh, do you have a vulnerability or something like that? That actually, if we had this sooner, it would have caught the graph vulnerability way sooner than uh, later. Uh, so it's called, uh, it's also a type of kind uh, called Cyclone DX. I don't know if how many of you are aware of it, but it's a cool thing. Uh, so that I hope it helps with our security in future. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, hello, goodbye. All right, hello everyone, I'm Valdir. And during this hackathon, which was very rushed among all the interesting sessions, uh, I tried to make this tool called Wikispeed, which I made back in, uh, I forgot, but uh, it's been broken for a while. So there used to be uh, a tool called Wikipulse, was created by Ed, uh, I forgot his name. Summers, Summers yeah. It went down um, a while ago, but in any case, I I created Wikispeed before it, it, uh, Wikipulse went down because I wanted to make one version that uh, worked without. Oh, basically, uh, let me explain. This is uh, it shows the speed of edits to uh, different Wikipedia's. So, like a graph, it's a visual. It's just a, a gimmick, but an interesting one. Um, and I wanted to make one that worked uh, client side. So this one needed a, com a component in the server side to to talk to the IRC feed. Um, so I created a version called Wikispeed that worked um, in the browser um, without the server-side component. But then in 2017, it stopped working because the, the RC stream interface that I was using was deprecated. And I never ported it because the other one was still working. But then Heroku uh, 
canceled their free plans, so I uh, have been wanting to make Wikispeed uh, work again, so I had to port it to the, the replacement of RC feeds, which is uh, event streams. And uh, I hope it works. I just pushed it. Oh, yeah, cool. So there's, there's still a bug where the zero, s uh, it shows as one, uh, because this is a logarithmic chart. I have to fix that, but at least it's working. So that's, uh, that's my project. Hello, it's Do. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you to Amir to force me to do that. Yeah. So as may you know, some of you knows about that we are recently working on the flag address extension to convert into codex. Most of we are failing and breaking it. And I would like to show only one uh, feature implements about that. So be, uh, before that, we were using and. Something just next to the article text, which is, as you can see here, use it, it was looks like that. Is that enough? Okay. Now we change it with this. This. Not yet. This. Yeah, this uh, uh, little window provides more information about what it does, actually. You know, usually people, when, you, when they go to the, and visit that page, you know, just this. Okay, there are three, three chains. Okay, what does it mean? Who knows? But now, everyone knows what does it mean. And if you have an edit right and review right, you can review immediately. Actually, not review, it just brings you to the review page. That's it. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, I'm Edward. Uh, I've, I've got a tool for doing uh, uh, geocoding, reverse geocoding. Uh, it's a tool you give it some coordinates and it will determine a commons category. So if I give you an example. Uh, oh, that's small. Let's see if I can make it bigger. Yeah. So, so this is uh, uh, some coordinates and you get back uh, details of category in a JSON format. And um, this is being used for batch uploading of images to commons. It's been used for a while. Uh, but sometimes you want to debug it. Um, so it would be nice to have some maps. So if I take you to the debug page, uh, and I now, there is a map. So you can see you know, if stuff's gone wrong and it's picked the wrong place. So that's what I've done. Hi, I'm Robert, and let me close all the rest of stuff first. Thanks. Okay, uh, uh, I'm Robert. So, um, what I actually wanted to do is to create nice looking interactive admin stats report. Um, because I just taken over admin stats from um, this user who have recently passed on. So, uh, rest in peace. But uh, what I wanted to do was to take this cumulative report and break it down to smaller uh, charts. Uh, time charts where we can see uh, which admin has done stuff last month or last year or stuff like that. Uh, I'm still trying to get it to work. So uh, where I'm stuck now is just to write efficient queries because right now every time I write, run a query is taking um, an hour or so to um, get the data out. So writing efficient queries and uh, writing scripts to get the breakdown. Yeah, so um, the end goal is mainly to extend it to become a, uh, in eventually a web-based interactive report on uh, Tools Forge. I, I, I'm aware there's X2 as well, but uh, it would be nice to have an interactive one and also potentially uh, extend out to other projects so that we can see who do what and then uh, potentially uh, approach, this, approach this that means to get them um, uh, 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 get them to, to share what how they do their stuff so that uh, more admins can take over their role instead of like having one or two admins handling certain um, admin uh, areas. Yeah, so that's all. All 
All right, looks like we have at least one more person up here. Um, contact is my talk page. <laughs> Same, anyone wanna claim this? Let's look at the fabricator ticket. Leaderboard. He's remote, right? He's right. Oh, 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 sorry. Um, I don't know what to say about this, though. Let's see what he said. Inspired from a meta wiki talk page where community ran into issues because a key member didn't realize that the global rights had expired. Uh, goal is to prevent such issues by letting them know that it's going to expire soon so they can re-request as needed. Let's see what a link does. Again, I don't know exactly what I'm looking for. Anyone know? Sorry? Do you want to actually say that into the microphone there? That'd be fantastic. That way we can get on the recording. Yeah, so it looks like uh, this code is set up so that when it hits the expiration, which is on the right-hand column, uh, it'll, I think, do a talk page message that it's expiring, just so you can renew it or whatever. Cool. Awesome. Fantastic. All right, well, thanks, everybody. Is there anyone else who did not sign up yet who wants to give a quick less than two-minute talk on whatever they worked on this week? There's a lot more than just 20 here. I'm really glad to see, but still. All right. So let's get to the final one here. So. Thank you all for coming again, um, doing all the work. Uh, I know this year with the Wikimedia is a little bit different than we've normally done. We didn't do the pre-conference days. Uh, we'll see about doing it again next year. Um, but this is all the stuff that I really want to go ahead and have you make sure that you do, right? So hopefully you've been adding the Fabricator tag to the tasks if you started something new um, and that you put your tasks up on the board. Uh, hopefully you've taken some pictures, you've got some documentation, you want to put them up on commons, go ahead and use the Wikimedia underscore 2024 underscore hackathon category, which would be fantastic. And then coming up at the final closing ceremony in the main hall that starts at five o'clock today, um, we're going to be announcing the coolest tool winners. So really cool stuff. Um, Hackathon survey is over there. It's also on the papers that we had everywhere. Um, but I would love to hear what you guys think. It's, again, a little bit different this year, but want to make sure that everything was fine, other than, obviously, the heat and the AC. We, we all know about that. Um, cool. So what's next? Group photo. So let's go ahead and see where our photographers are and where they want to go ahead and place you. It might be something where they're just going to stand on the stage and take a picture this way. But where are my photographers? want to have them come on down and sneak peek here all of our coolest tool winners and the coolest tool academy everyone who's in attendance at wikimania hopefully are here now and i want to go ahead and have them come up to the stage i'm not going to tell you which tool they won for but these are the people so come on up Yes, of course, you're the, you're part of the academy. <laughs>